Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of The County Seat. I'm your host, Chad Booth. The County Seat is a program that talks about issues that are important to our daily lives in Utah and things that happen at the county level. Utah is a state that is known for its resources. We have abundant mineralogical resources. We have oil. We have gas. And yes, we have timber. But what happens when an outside enemy attacks that timber? It's become quite the source of controversy in pine bark beetle and spruce beetle infestations on the different forests of the state of Utah. Exactly why they happen, nobody knows. What to do about it? There's a lot of controversy. Here with that story is Susan Wood. There are few things more beautiful than a mountainside covered in green forests. On the other side of that coin is the desolation left behind after a devastating fire. We're used to seeing these two extremes, but over the past decade, a strange sort of green and gray patchwork has taken hold in many of Utah's most expansive forests. A kind of a half-dead, half-alive jumble. Strands of dead trees intermingled with the living. The problem isn't fire or extreme weather. In fact, the culprit is actually very small, magnified by what some call simple inaction. Forest Service did a pretty decent job of managing the forest. They had a system worked out where they would mark and harvest old timber. And if you do that, you can keep the forest forever young. And then we got some beetle infestation. We've lost 50 to 60 percent of our overstory spruce since the early 90s as a result of these spruce beetle outbreaks. The Forest Service wanted to uh, deal with this issue and treat this problem through timber harvesting. They were unable to, to sell the timber due to environmental litigation. And so at the core of the, the bark beetle issue, it could have been avoided. Kevin Mueller of the Utah Environmental Congress, a group dedicated to preserving national forests, argues that point. A beetle outbreak that's just on the edge of emerging, um, entomologists have uh, compared it to trying to cloud seed to stop a hurricane. Whenever we find these uh, outbreaks, if we can get on them soon, where we remove the infested host trees, we find that we may be able to suppress it. But the longer you delay that, the more abilities they have to spread to other sites. Uh, it becomes much a, more of a problem for us to address the extent of the outbreak. And uh, that's what happened on the Dixie. During the 1980s and 90s, varying species of bark beetle began to make their way into western forests. Experts erring on the environmental science side preferred to let nature proceed unfettered. Experts who erred on the forest management side preferred a strategy of intervention, removing the weak, infected trees before the infestation could overwhelm the defenses of healthy ones. Forest Service promptly marked those infestations for timber sale. So the Utah Wilderness Alliance protested, filed suit, and stopped the sale. County leaders felt the removal of the timber would stop the infestation and the lumber sale would lift the local economy. The Southern Utah Wilderness Alliance and other conservation groups countered that while in the short term the loss of much of the forest would be detrimental, the long-term outlook was much different. Now, this might all sound really horrible, but Spruce beetle outbreaks are within the historic range of natural variability in a spruce forest. So that's something that I think is lost in a lot of this debate, is that it's not an unnatural or even unhealthy step of the forest. It's part of what happens in the forest. It's a misunderstanding of what the forest is for, how it can best be utilized to bless all of the elements involved. Had we been able to get in there earlier in Sydney Valley, could we have uh, suppressed the outbreak to the point where the populations were what we call endemic? We will, we'll never know because we never had that opportunity. But we have examples where we've done that in other areas, like on the Skull Forest in northern Utah on the Logan Ranger District. I think it's giving way too much credit to the science of forestry to think that it can actually stop um, spruce beetle outbreaks, even when they're first emerging. Whether the bark beetle infestation could have been avoided or not may be open for debate. But what will happen to these forests now that the damage has been done is a variable no one can fully predict. There's going to be new bark beetle infestations throughout Garfield County and the West, but they can be treated. And the way to treat them is a partnership between the Forest Service 
and the private sector and even our uh, governments as uh, cooperating agencies, we can go forward and we can treat these issues. For the county seat, I'm Susan Wood. Thank you, Susan, for that report on the bark beetle. It is a topic that has the potential of flaring up into uh, quite a discussion. There is a pun intended in that. We will be back with the county seat in our panel discussion on bark beetles in the state of Utah when we come back. What is play? Is it culture? Is it adventure? Is it... Ooh, uh, it's a destination. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's, right. that's, right. that's, right. that's, right. that's right. That's correct. Cedar City and Brinehead Resort in the heart of Iron County, where outdoor excitement, culture, and the iron industry melt together. Come and forge a new adventure where play is the thing. You haven't forgotten how to play. It's just that you haven't been to the right place yet. Come get away for two days of fun on June 24th and 25th for Mighton Days. There will be a parade, barbecue, talent show, vendors dancing, car show, and a horseshoe competition. Bring your friends and family to enjoy some good old-fashioned fun in downtown Mighton. Duchesne County. Close enough for business, far enough to get away. The State of Utah School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration. CITLA manages 3.5 million acres of Utah lands with the express purpose of furthering the education of Utah students while promoting local industry, oil and gas, even residential development, all at the same time. Through the careful use of trust lands, we distributed more than $22 million to Utah schools last year. The State of Utah School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration, building the state's permanent school fund. Take a look, take a glimpse, take a peek. You'll be surprised by what you find. Join us June 3rd and 4th at 8 p.m. for the Deseret Peak Stampede. This is a pro rodeo event you won't want to miss. Get tickets now at smithtix.com or at the Deseret Peak Complex. Adventure, beauty, excitement. Tooele County Parks and Recreation. Bringing communities together.